The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? Sean Garmer and Paul Leeser. Hello and welcome to the Wrestling to the Max Study 205 Live review for January 31st, 2017. I uh, can't believe we're already in February, but uh, with me here, Mr. Paul Leeser. hey yo. Well, Paul, another week of 205 Live, and this one, of course, coming off of Neville becoming the Cruiserweight Champion for the first time, and uh, they, uh, let's see what they, they had... Uh, they did not touch on that since they touched on it on, on Raw. But they had uh, another premier athlete moment here with Tony Nese taking on Lince Dorado. And this was a, a good match. Uh, Tony Nese gets another win. And they are uh, continuing this thing with TJ Perkins where he's getting involved and making the save for him beating up uh, Lince Dorado. What... Uh, what you thinking about this uh, this little feud here? At least they're making it a feud. Yeah, at least it's a feud. It, it's pretty good. Tony Nese, he's good in the ring. So far outside of it, he's really done nothing to make me care so much about what he's doing. I like T.J. Perkins though. I uh, so that that has me somewhat interested in all that, and I think the matches will be good. I like this one too. Lince is a great athlete. Somebody who I think. Uh, has has a shot at being a decent baby face for him in the future whenever they decide to start doing something with him. Yes, uh, I, I agree. If they they do start doing something with him, I, I think he could certainly do that. He's got the moves and everything, and uh, I mean they've really tried with Tony Nese pushing him here, but that's sort of his gimmick though. Is he's not going to give you a whole lot out of the ring. He seems to just want to focus on being the athlete and not wanting to talk. Uh, doing the talk part of being the athlete, so uh, we shall see if that really. I get you find in other companies. <laughs> yeah, and in other sports too. You don't go and talk to the uh, the media. You are screwed. <laughs> so uh, you know that it is. Uh, again, we'll have to see what they decide to do here with Tony Nies, but. We already had the uh, Austin Aries comedy segments with him twice now, uh, so it's it's interesting. But it's really hard in WWE to kind of just make it on in the ring. You got to do a little bit more than that, mm-hmm. and especially on a brand that really needs people to stick their neck out and be stars and try to captivate you with what they can do on the promo as well as what they do in the ring. And Tony Nese has done one part of that, I think, pretty well. The other part uh, leaves a lot to be desired so far. So you uh, have Rich Swan on crutches because he got hurt on Raw when he brawled with Neville. And, uh, you know, he says he's going to get his rematch when he's healthy. Neville is right there in his face to tell him, look, man, you need to learn to stay down. And uh, Swan's like, hell no, I'm not doing that. And Neville's like, all right, well, you're going to go down to the ground anyway. And uh, no, just a short little segment for Neville to once again be a heel on and continue in the story. I, I I really actually like this segment a whole lot. It's very simple, but it gets the point across really well. Rich Swan's already down. 
He's not willing to give up on his title match with Neville. He still wants to beat him and show him that he is the better man and all this. And Neville, of course, being the king that he is, needs his subjects to bow to him. And uh, he, he just helps Swan a little bit there with a nice little shove. Nice little shove. And the, uh, the, the facial expressions across both continue to sell me on this. Swan's abject hatred face is just spot on. <laughs> I agree. I love that. Uh, and then this, ah oh man, that was just so good. And mm-hmm. he he continues to show it here in another little baptism with Noam Dar, where uh, you know Noam Dar's there with Alicia and uh, Neville's like, man, I need a tag partner. And Noam Dar's like, yep, I'm the man you're looking for. Uh, and <laughs> Neville's like, oh, whatever, shut up and leave your baggage at home. And Alicia Fox does not like being called baggage. She takes uh, umbrage at that, and you have your main event uh, segment here with uh, them having about a 13-minute match. It was a good match. Uh, Jack Gallagher and Cedric Alexander taking on Noam Dar and Neville. And uh, Cedric and Jack Gallagher win uh, because uh, Noam Dar is... uh, is an idiot, <laughs> but uh, pretty much he gets lumbar checked. And, uh, I mean, heck, how did you not know that Neville was going to leave you high and dry? He said he didn't care about you and that he didn't need your help. So, <laughs> typical uh, heel being an ass, and, you know, the faces get a little win back there. Yeah, and uh, both Cedric and Jack are going to be great challengers to step up in the wake of Rich Swan getting hurt. And, I mean, I kind of lean towards Cedric just because I think him and Neville can have the better match. But, uh, you know, Jack Gallagher is a tremendous wrestler, too. And I, this match, it got a little boring for me at times. And it might just be because the crowd seemed so disinterested in it, too. But there there were parts where it felt a little flat. I, I loved the finish, though. I, Neville leaving him high and dry. And just let Cedric absolutely murdered Noah Dar with that lumbar check. And it's... Uh, there's really good parts in this, but like, like I said, there's there's other parts that are a little dull. And I love the segment before this, too, with uh, Noah and Dar saying he was there with Alicia Fox and that just big, goofy smile. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Hey, he, he's proud of his woman, you know? So he had to work so hard to get her. And so, I mean, I don't blame him a little bit there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Cedric has every reason in the world to want to lumbar check the the lungs out of uh, Noam Dar. I mean, mm-hmm. just so much, so much hatred for that man. So I, I don't blame him at all. And of course, the big thing going on with this show is just the debut of Akira Tozawa on 205 Live. He had a short little three minute match, and I mean, you got to see all the Tozawa stuff here, and I think that's what you wanted out of this. Yeah, a typical squash. Aaron Solo is uh, Bailey's boo, by the way, if, if you're unfamiliar with him. And he's, he's a good wrestler in his own right, too. So, um, Akira Tozawa, though, is, is tremendous. I'm really looking forward to see what he did. He got the crowd on his side pretty quick, I think, for for how little he actually got to do in the match, which which is a good sign. And I, I love the post-match with Aries, too, by the way. This, this was, that was great. Yes, uh, the stuff. <laughs> Aries goes out to be the intrepid journalist. And, you know, he asks them, like, hey, uh, Tozawa, do you speak English? And Tozawa just speaks Japanese. <laughs> Tozawa does know how to speak some English. That's what's funny. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, I, I like these things with Aries. I mean, he he's really, uh, he plays that that part of his character, well, he's an ass, and, uh, you know, he, he he wants to make fun of these guys, so why not? Mm-hmm. It, that's what he does. He's, he obviously feels he's better than them. He's going to show you in his way. The uh, the old Bobby Heenan stirring the pot interview is what I like to call it, and uh, he's got it down spectacularly. Him and Graves and Morrow on commentary are just freaking money together. Just because Graves and Aries have no problem teaming up to bag on Morrow every time he messes up on something, and it, you get a spectacular example on this episode too. So uh, I love it. <laughs> it's Dude. so great. 
<laughs> and then Aries always says, so what's your strategy? I'm just going to poke him in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to go out there and kick him in the dick, Marl. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I want to see that happen. Just go out there and kick him in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Like that is that's the new finisher. Aries just goes out, <laughs> bing. Oh, uh, but and you get a Grandma Talik uh, video package, which I think we haven't seen uh, much for him too. Uh, I'm guessing that the we're gonna get an Akira and Brian Kendrick feud eventually here, because I guess the jury's out, so Brian Kendrick has the you know the next Japanese guy up. I guess. Like I guess is is the way they're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not surprisingly okay with this. Uh, I think uh, Kendrick, the way he works now, is much more suited the way Tozawa likes to work. And Tozawa's more uh, more high flying maneuvers will seem more impressive, and I, they can both work the ground very well too. So I think that's the big thing to look forward to there. So you know, with them getting spots on Raw, how long do you think do you think we see Tozawa this upcoming week or? They're gonna take I a little would, while with him. I would like to think so. Just uh, maybe depending on where Raw is too. Like they're going to a smarky crowd, then definitely. But I, I'd like to think so. Th- there's a lot of talk going around too that they're already talking about busting 205 off of Raw and just making it a network exclusive show. Thoughts on that? <sighs> That's exactly what I didn't want because I hate it for these guys. Like I hate it for. Tozawa, I hate it for Metalik, and not to say any of the other ones, I don't, but, like, you know, Ricochet has already talked about, I'm not coming unless you guarantee me I'm not going to be on 205 Live, and that's kind of, you know, he's a junior right now in New Japan, why wouldn't you be a junior, he doesn't want to be a junior in WWE, and, but you're going to tell a character Tozawa he has to be a junior, you know, mm-hmm. so... That's what kind of sucks. Is like, okay, not only are you not even going to be real to perform in front of WWE crowds, you're going to be stuck in the... Because uh, eventually, I would assume, if you're going to make it where they don't even appear on Raw, they're going to wind up getting knocked off of SmackDown eventually. So, uh, I don't know. I it, If they can keep it there behind SmackDown or before SmackDown, I guess it's okay. But... I just hate seeing these guys pigeonholed, and they're never. It seems like they're never going to get out of the two or five thing. It it makes me interested in what they could do with this busting it away from that though. Cause say they decided they wanted to start taking NXT out into bigger bigger venues and stuff like that. You could certainly put together, I think, a a way to tape both NXT and two or five live in front of and. It, doesn't even have to be in arenas the same size as Full Sail, right? Like, you could do those mid-level arenas in the Northeast that WWE used to run all the time uh, in the early 90s, like um, like the Richmond Coliseum or, or stuff like that, where you have NXT and, and 205 Live taped across, you know, however many days you want to do, like two days or, or what have you. But I think there there might be some merit in that, at least. Yeah, they could certainly go to, like, those 1,000... 1000- 1500 seat arenas uh 2000 even if you're going to tell them okay we're going to tape two weeks of nxt here and two weeks of 205 live and with all these different guys uh you know you're going to go see it Uh, i think you definitely could sell it out especially the the avenue of it being on tv is going to make a bigger difference than say we're going to run a 2000 seat arena for a house show Mm-hmm. So, and you could definitely, you could even have some mixing and matching uh, once you get it into that level too, where you could have some guys from 205 Live show up on NXT more regularly, you know, and hopefully they get embraced by that NXT crowd and, and they can get knocked out of there eventually. But yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it, I, I guess. It's just. I just don't see what Raw's going to do. I mean, they already seem kind of comfortable with the two segments they're giving the Cruiserweight guys. What are you going to fill that time with? That's that's where I'm at, too. If you take them off, you got to have some plan in, in there to make sure you're getting these mid-card guys more time. And I don't know if they have that in plan Ugh. in mind. I just feel we're going to get more filler matches instead. Yeah, that, and that's going to be kind of rough. I kind of like where the cruiserweights are right now. Obviously, I wish the crowds cared more, 
Uh, but I think that's more on WWE than it is on what the guys are doing. So I, I don't I don't know. They, they, I think they're just sort of stuck because I think they they gave it to the show where they don't know what to do with them, and that that's where they're at. Yeah, uh, I I'm happy with the fact that it seems to at least they're getting a good flow here with two hundred five live. So. You know, even though they're not really doing a whole lot with them on Raw still, at least it's time that feels like it matters because it's going towards this show. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just take them off and, okay, what are you going to do to fill those two segments now? Uh, I mean, 205 Live is, I think it's starting to grow on people, at least people that watch it. There's still a lot of people that don't watch it, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely she get something, she get some good action, and, I mean, we're still going to get some debuting guys, so that's interesting, we'll see how fast, uh, you know, Akira Tozawa gets up here, because I think definitely if he got Corpus Christi to get on his side really quick, I think uh, that bodes really well for, for him, uh, going f further in this, uh, on this show. Yeah, like especially if you get out into Philly or in New York and then that area, or even even Los Angeles, he's had a lot of time in PWG. So if you have those kind of guides there, certainly I, I think the reactions for him could be much larger. Certainly, and I think uh, we'll have to see what they wind up doing with 205 Live. If it's still going to be on Raw or not, I I think they probably wouldn't do it until after WrestleMania. That is uh, the top. It would be after WrestleMania. And uh, we shall see. Until then, this has been the 205 Live review for this week. And uh, you can uh, get with us again on Thursday when we'll be reviewing NXT and also doing our Part 2 episode with, uh, with Gary, of course. And we'll be talking about more of the news that's been going on and... We'll probably have a topic or two and, and have an uh, impact wrestling to talk about and some other things. So stay tuned. Until then, we shall see you guys later. Take it easy, folks. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.